and we are good to go. So everyone, welcome to this session on enlightened leadership, the leadership for the 21st century. It is, uh, it is uh, 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 what I call a pleasure and honor for me uh, to be with you, to be uh, meeting with you, to be discussing this topic, because uh, the topic on leadership is something that is very close to my heart. Uh, it is something that I'm working on uh, for myself. Now, uh, this topic on self-leadership is one of the topics that I uh, bring to the public. We also have the series on neurosemantics, the meta coaching system series, and also parenting series. So all of these uh, series, I do it on Thursdays. So this is what, the second Thursday of the month. So we are talking about self-leadership. So I would like to uh, welcome all of you. It is a pleasure and honor. And I hope that uh, by being here this evening, you are going to gain something that is uh, of use, of benefit uh, to you. Now, uh, allow me to introduce myself. This is especially to the people who will be watching the recording later who have not met me before. Uh, I'm Mazuki. I'm a neurosemantics trainer and meta coach. I also represent Malaysia uh, on the leadership team of the International Society of Neurosemantics. I help people to systematically develop skills in leading, communicating, and coaching to bring out the best in yourself and others. By actualizing that, you can experience an exceptional quality of life filled with happiness, creativity, and fulfillment. In the 60, sometimes it goes on to 90 minutes together, we'll be discussing on what is enlightened leadership. Uh, next one is on leaders need to get their psychology right. Third point is the assumptions about human nature. And if we have time, we'll go into the contrasting leadership styles. I will pause for discussion after each main point. Uh, this is to invite questions, comments, and contributions. And especially on this topic, which I believe that it is not a new topic for you. Uh, many of you have already uh, are already into the topic on uh, leadership. I would like to invite uh, participation uh, and ideas uh, from all of you. And my warning to you is that my style is to be light and humorous. So if I laugh or smile, I'm never laughing at you, but at our silly human qualities. My purpose is to lighten things up, reduce being serious, and be more real. And every time I conduct a program such as this, I uh, allow myself to be reminded of uh, the branding that my grandchildren give to me is that grandfather you are a fungi so that reminds me to remain fun uh, <laughs> and as humorous as i can be <laughs> so before we continue on i would like to uh, say welcome to uh, all of you who've just um, uh, who's just uh, joined in uh, I noticed, yes, uh, in, uh, Leon was the first one to come in. Lily, thank you for being here. Then Harvey, uh, then uh, Elaine, I think, uh, being here. Now we have uh, Christian all the way from uh, South Africa. Uh, Wendy uh, and Tessie, uh, great to see you again, Tessie. And uh, we have, much, I, I, I have to pronounce it slowly. Uh, Mochi DC is that is that right? Did I pronounce it right? You're getting DC. there, Mochi. Yeah, you're getting there. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I'm getting there. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, also from uh, South Africa, and we have Pierre uh, joining us from uh, South uh, Korea, right? Yeah, and we have Kwan and also uh, Lisa uh, joining us. So thank you, everyone. Uh, for joining us, and uh, it is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, a pleasure and honor for me to be meeting with you this evening. Now, just a little bit of uh, uh, introduction to this uh, to this topic. That um, 
this topic is in the context of people who are managing and leading, especially organizations, however not limited to organizations, uh, in any role that you play, there is that part whereby you are managing things and leading. Now, just to give a little bit of distinction between managing and leading, is that managing is about handling, supervising, or controlling materials and processes. Uh, in, in manufacturing, uh, they use the three M's. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar with the three M's. Uh, it is not Muhammad Mazuki Muhammad. That's also three M. <laughs> but the three M's are material, machine, and uh, sorry, materi uh, uh, material, method, and uh, oh, it's four M's. Material, machine, method, and man, manpower. Okay, so managing is about material, machines, uh, and processes. Now, leading is about the people element in organization. Leading is about communicating and relating with people and influencing them in mutually enhancing ways to achieve a desired objective. So this is the area that we'll be talking about this evening. Now, the job of a leader is to manage the talent in an organization, the people element in the uh, uh, in the 4M, material, machine, method, and, uh, and men. Now, this involves acquiring talent, engaging talent in order to retain them. What are the problems that leaders face in dealing people? And we have the great resignation happening uh, right now in the States that just uh, highlights the issue that organize, uh, organization, not just organizations, leaders face. You see, a lot of leaders, they take the industrial approach of management by stereotyping people. How do they stereotype people? Through generational stereotyping. Baby boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, millennials. So that's one kind of uh, stereotyping. Then uh, you have uh, other types of stereotyping, uh, personality stereotyping. So uh, you have uh, things like MBTI, Personality Plus, uh, uh, DISC, Colored Brain. So uh, stereotyping people just makes the situation worse because they say, uh, I, I'm just checking. Uh, we have. Okay, we have the, the sound coming from the background, uh, just to uh, check with you if you can just <laughs> your microphone, mm -hmm. otherwise is everyone is already muted, the microphone is coming from here, I don't know who's around here, it's all dark around me, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> now, a lot of leaders, when they stereotype people, they fail to realize that people are individuals. Real leadership is personal, intimate, and intense. This is something that leaders today need to realize because people want to connect with people individually. And that is why, uh, according to a lot of uh, leadership research, almost 80% of people who... Uh, separate from the companies, they quit from the companies, almost 80% of them quit because of their bosses, not because of the job, not because of the company, because they are not able to connect uh, with their bosses. Now, the thing is, many managers shy away from leading because they are in the dark about the skills for understanding individual human being. Enlightened leadership is about understanding each individual, understanding the individuals that you lead and leading them in the way that they require to be led in the moment. I was talking to a friend uh, just this uh, uh, a couple of hours ago that 
leaders, managers and leaders, we can manage materials, machines and processes, but humans don't want and don't like to be managed. They love to be led and leading is personal, intimate and intense. The moment you stereotype people, then you are disengaging people from the organization. Now, let me just uh, mention uh, a couple of things right now. Enlightened leadership is not about some mystical or spiritual state that a leader must att attain. Uh, that is not the enlightened leadership that I am uh, re referring to. Okay. However, what I'm referring to is that uh, an enlightened leadership is about leaders who are enlightened about human nature and they understand people. This is what I'm referring to, enlightened about human nature and also leaders who understand people. This is what I'm referring to as enlightened leadership. So this is not a, a new brand. People talk about transformative leadership and whatsoever. I'm not referring to those brands. I'm, I'm talking about these are the leaders who understand what? They understand the needs of uh, their people and their drives, the needs and drives of the people. They understand the cognitive functioning of the people that they lead. They understand their developmental drives and they understand their highest self-actualization drives. So these are uh, these leaders, they understand how the people that they lead work how the people that they lead operate. So they are leading from the way that the people that they lead operate. This is what we are referring to as enlightened leadership. Now, just a quick mention over here that this topic on enlightened leadership is one of the topics that is discussed in the uh, full program called Unleashing Leadership. Uh, and I'll be starting that uh, that. Uh, program is a three-day program. I'll be starting it on Saturday. Yeah, so that's uh, where we are at when we talk about enlightened leadership. Is this not a, a spiritual state or whatsoever? But yes, when you move into their self-actualization needs, then you are connecting with people at the spiritual level. However, when we talk about enlightened leadership over here, we are talking about leaders who understand people, who are enlightened about human nature, who uh, understand people's needs and drives, their cognitive functioning, their developmental drives, and their highest self-actualization drives. So that's, what, that's where we are at. Okay, so let's get going on the first point regarding this uh, this concept called enlightened leadership. Abraham Maslow called for a new kind of leadership. He called it enlightened management. For self-actualizing leaders who would call for the best from people, and when they do this, they would create self-actualizing companies. So leaders who are self-actualizing because they are bringing out the best in the people, they are creating self-actualizing companies. Now, the self-actualization psychology reveals a completely new side of humanity. It is a side that was not seen and was not even anticipated by the old psychologists. Whereas the old psychologists studied the darker side, the side of unhealth, illness, and pathology, the new psychology studies the bright side of human nature. The new psychologists, people are seen in a new light, in the light of their highest needs, their potentials, and their untapped human capital of intelligence and 
creativity. Now, does it mean that from the self-actualization psychology, people do not have some traits of the dark side? They do. It's just that people it's just that that dark side of human nature relates to people who are unhealthy and has illness. So the self-actualization psychology focuses on people who are, who are healthy and psychologically healthy. So using self-actualization psychology, self-actualizing leaders understand the highest and best in human nature. So this is where we are focusing our leadership on. So self-actualizing leaders, they understand the theory why of leadership. And I suspect that many of you are familiar with the theory why of leadership. So what does theory why of leadership uh, uh, tell us? People, <clears throat> want to trust and be trusted. People want to be responsible and take ownership of their work. People want to be challenged and stretched. People want to be recognized as unique and understood for themselves. So this is also one one of the reasons why uh, stereotyping people doesn't work because people want to be known as that unique person that they are. People want to collaborate and cooperate. People want to be part of a winning team, to be a part of a community. People want to use their talents to develop their talents. And have you come across people who would quit their jobs just because they are unable to bring out the talents and present it to humanity. As Abraham Maslow puts it, a, 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 music, a musician must make music, an artist must paint, and so on. So people want to bring out the talents uh, in themselves. People want to work. When, when I mentioned that, the first thought that comes to mind are little children at about the age of uh, th between three, four, and five. You can see that they are so enthusiastic about uh, working. Uh, if, you have uh, if you have children in the house of that age, uh, uh, those are when they are at the stage whereby they are very helpful when they are not very useful. <laughs> They are not so useful because they don't have the competency to do that. But at that time, they just want to help. This is where uh, we notice people want to work. People want to know and to be in the know, to learn. People want to learn. People want to make a difference. People want to contribute to create solutions. People want to be valued for their work, to take pride in workmanship. People want to make decisions appropriate to their level of activity. So this is the, uh, the view from self-actualization psychology, Abraham Maslow's view of human nature led to this theory why, as articulated by Douglas McGregor. Now, Maslow and McGregor and those who followed them said that people not only want this experience, they thrive on them and actually need them. They need them to be psychologically healthy. The self-actualization drive motivates all people as they meet their basic needs and opens them up to the level of self-actualization. As you fulfill of your needs, the lower level needs, then you are moving into the level of self-actualization. As a result, during the last half of the 20th century, there has been a call for a new kind of leader. So now we are already in the 21st century. So it started in the last half of the previous century. There's been call for leaders who go beyond relying on the traditional 
patterns of power and status. So this is what I mentioned earlier, I think before we started the session, that the great resignation is a pushback against the traditional patterns of power and status because people want to know, uh, wants to be accepted as human beings, as individuals. So that is why in the 21st century, we are calling for leaders who move beyond command and control to influence and lead by trust, respect, and integrity. These are leaders who collaborate, co-create, and participate. These are leaders who serve a higher vision or purpose that are bigger than money and things. And these leaders, they are leaders who focus on quality, service, values, relationships, participation, new ways for people to work together, synergistic, openness, learning, personal responsibility, respect, dignity, trust, and self-renewing system. So these are uh, what these leaders are all about. And these concepts have been turning the whole idea of leadership upside down. So let me pause there. And I see, uh, Mochi, did see you raise your hand? Go ahead. Yes. Um, so what happens when you get into an, an organization where people are used to not working? I can make an example, maybe government. <laughs> and you come in you look at their job descriptions they're not performing what they're supposed to be performing and really they they don't understand i mean they've been working there 15 years mm. and all what they know is to do some work for four hours after lunch they are gone home you know or they're gone to the shops yeah yeah so those are uh, people who are disengaged from that work and they are living lives that are very, uh, I will use the word, far below what they are capable of. And as Abraham Maslow puts it, if you deliberately do uh, become less than who you are, in his word, he says, I guarantee you that you'll be unhappy for the rest of your uh, of your lives. So you look at these people who are burning their time in the uh, in the government or companies that they are work uh, that they are working in. Uh, ask them about the quality of their lives. Does that in any way answer your question? Um, partly so, um, because I would like, one would like to, um, they must be part of the team, you know, you would like them to be part of the team, you know, you like them to see the brighter side of things, you know, uh, I, 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 yeah, so how do you go about it? Yes, like you have mentioned, uh, they're living far below the, their capabilities, and then how do you go around? What are the other things that I can tap into okay. uh, so that they, they can be part of the team? Yeah. So this is what this, uh, uh, this uh, session is uh, about. So what I will be going uh, uh, into afterwards, I'll be going into the uh, topic on one is the psychologies that we as leaders need to have. Because how we behave towards the people that we lead depends on the psychologies that we have. So what are the psychologies that we need to have? So part of it was that theory why uh, of human nature. Uh, and uh, we look at the dark side and the bright side of the psychologies because uh, whichever psychologies that we take will dictate the way that we behave towards the people. So if we want to bring them to higher creativity and productivity in their lives, we as leaders need to get our psychologies right mm -hmm. so that we treat them in the right way. Yeah, because if we uh, get our psychologies wrong, then we are creating 
uh, we are creating those kind of people who are disengaged and uh, uh, and they are not living their fullest life. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lily. Go ahead. Thank you, Maruki. Uh, I, I recently actually read from newspaper and was saying that nowadays, uh, especially the young generation, what they are looking, number one, is their salary. And then they want easy job, high salary, and no pressure job. So I wasn't sure, like for this, right, just now was mentioned, the theory why of leadership is all like responsibility that they are looking for, you know, contribution and all this. So if we uh, met a group of people that they want high salary, low pressure, not many jobs, you know, I mean, not too much responsibility, how do we manage this type of people? Yeah. Uh, thank you. So thank you. I, um, uh, for me, uh, the way that I see it is that the people in organizations, the way that they work is dependent uh, to a large extent on the way that leaders are leading them. So if leaders are getting the psychologies wrong in the way that they are leading those people, then what happens is exactly as what you are, uh, what you describe. Uh, as long as I get good salary, as long as I... Uh, uh, have uh, easy job, uh, I'm okay uh, over here. So the, the thing is that these people are not bringing the greatest creativity and value to the organization. So mm -hmm. it is up to us leaders to bring them up because what we want to appeal to is we want to appeal to the best uh, uh, potentials in human nature. So that's why our understanding of human nature. This is what we refer to, to be enlightened about the nature of human uh, nature. Because if we treat people as, if our understanding of people is that people are lazy, they like to skive, they, uh, uh, and uh, they, uh, they want to cheat. If our understanding of people is that way, we will regulate them in that particular way. And because of that, they will behave in that way. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Yeah, I uh, uh, I don't know about uh, any one of you uh, if you have uh, uh, pet dogs. Now, I used to have a neighbor who every time uh, I pass by uh, their house, I feel so saddened when I see their dog because twenty four seven that dog is tied to. Uh, a post outside of the house and there is only a short chain. I think the chain is not more than one and a half meters long. Uh, and every time I pass by the house, I notice that the dog is acting like it's a crazy dog. Yeah, And I don't blame the dog because I would go crazy too <laughs> if I'm tied on a short leash. <laughs> now, when leaders tie their employees on a short leash like that, you can't blame them for being lazy or crazy. So that's why it starts with us to have the right psychology about human behavior. And when we interact and connect with them using these healthy psychologies, then the health will come out from them. Does thank you. Sense? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So basically, it's kind of we walk the talk. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you for saying that, uh, Lily. So uh, thank you. I, uh, I, used, I used to have, <laughs> this is going back to my old school days. Uh, we have our seniors who take care of us, not just our teachers. Uh, I, I went to boarding school. So we have our seniors taking care of us. And sometimes these seniors say that, uh, do as I tell you to do, don't do as I do. And of course, being a 13 year old, okay, I will do what you tell me to do. Uh, but then again, later on I realized, what exactly are they saying? I mean, 
so you mean to say I can't do what you do? I I only allowed to do what you tell me to do. And even at that age, I was wondering what kind of uh, seniors do I have? And similarly, in uh, uh, in organizations today, if this kind of uh, seniors come out, yeah, one of them came out and became a politician in our country. Uh, I will not uh, speak the name of that person. <laughs> so when they come out uh, in uh, and and work in uh, organizations or societies or companies, and they behave in that particular way, what will happen to the people that they lead? The people that they lead will be uh, thoroughly confused. Yeah, they will be thoroughly confused. Um, I wonder how many of you remember the times when, uh, when companies, uh, buildings where people work, uh, was full of smoke. You know, during that time, smoking was the in thing. How many of you remember that? Yeah. So you just reveal to me your age. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> And then, uh, and then the government started to have these initiatives. Okay, no more smoking in public places, and uh, and so they they implement no smoking uh, in the uh, 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 in the work areas and so on. And I've come not not few, but quite a number of companies when they did that. The boss's room is still a smoker's room, <laughs> and. However, there is no smoking room in the company, yeah, but the boss's room is the smoking room. And guess how the people are thinking down there. We can smoke while we work, but the boss can. So that's why, Lily, when you mentioned that we need to lead by example, absolutely. Because that gives us the moral currency to communicate with the people. Without that, we don't have any moral currency. Okay? So, let's move to uh, the next uh, topic, which is leaders need to get their psychology right. To lead in a self-actualizing way you first have to get your psychology right. Achieving competitive success through people depends on how you think of people, the workforce, relationships. If employees are disgruntled, it is hard to create good service and high performance. I remember at one time I was giving a preview about uh, um, I think it was a, a, a customer service training program uh, for this company. So I was giving a preview to the to the management team, and uh, they ask a certain question. And this part about uh, this part about the point I mentioned earlier: if employees are disgruntled, it is hard to create good service and high performance. So my way of answering it is that uh, any one of you uh, here has got a 10 ringgit note uh, so that I may borrow. And I noticed some people were just sitting there and somebody ruffled in and gave me a 10 ringgit note. And I asked the group, how did he or why did he give this 10 ringgit to me? So how did he manage to give this 10 ringgit note to me? Yeah. And people were thinking all of the different things uh, and they gave me all of those answers until somebody gave the most obvious answer. Because he has it. He has that 10 ringgit. That's why he could give it to me, regardless whether he trusted me or distrust me. But because he has that 10 ringgit, that's why he can give it to me. And I said to them, that's exactly what's happening in your organization. People cannot give what they don't have. So if you want your people to give good service to the customer, you as the leader must be on your best behavior to your staff because people cannot give 
what they do, what they don't have. So to lead in a self-actualizing way, you first have to get your psychology right. Next one is each leadership style and kind is based on different psychologies, different assumptions about human nature. So that's why we need to be very careful about the psychology that we are using in leading people because of the assumptions about human nature, your premises about people, about human nature, about how to work with, motivate, organize, align, and work with, determines your philosophy and leadership style that you will use and operate from. And this is also one aspect that I would like to remind uh, uh, every one of us, that sometimes people are fixated about what is the style of leadership that I need to bring in this day and age. Just know that what's driving uh, each of those styles are the assumptions about human nature, and we need to know what those assumptions are. Because if we get the assumptions wrong, then our style may not be effective or useful. Now, leadership is psychological and also social logical. You can effectively lead without an adequate and accurate understanding of human nature. To lead people effectively and healthily, you have to understand people, their nature, their psychology, their needs, their dreams, their highest drives. If your psychology is off, so will be your leadership. If your psychology is off, you will misunderstand and misread people and often be shocked by them. So what are your assumptions about people and human nature? What do people need? What motivates them? So this is why Right now, I would just like to bring your attention to the assumptions about human nature. One is the assumptions that people have for ages, for a long time, that's on the dark side of human nature. We call it Theory X. Then along came Abraham Maslow and asked about, so how about the people who are well, people who are functioning well in society, What's the psychology behind these people? So this is the bright side of human nature. We call them the uh, theory why. So when we look at the assumptions about human nature, we are going to take a look from the different categories. One is the uh, behavioral category. Next, the motivational category. Next, emotional category, then cognitive category, moral category, and intentional category and relational category. So these are the different categories that we are looking at. And we are going to compare and contrast between the dark side of human nature and the bright side of human nature. Because the, uh, the dark side and the bright side have different assumptions. And when you look at these assumptions, you will begin to notice why people behave in certain ways. Yeah, For example, if you have leaders who are very suspicious about their uh, the staff's behavior and not trusting their staff, so it is an indication that their assumption about human nature is that people cannot be trusted. So when we look at these assumptions about hu human nature, I want you to begin to notice what are the uh, what are the behaviors that will come from these assumptions. And this will give you an, uh, a better understanding of why people behave in certain ways. So let's take a look at uh, these uh, one by one. One is we look at it, the assumptions and the behavioral uh, assumptions about human nature. From theory X, the assumption is that people are lazy, dependent, and passive. 
they blame, they refuse to take action. So that's the assumption on theory from theory X. From theory Y, the assumption is that people are energetic, able to be independent and interdependent, active, at choice, proactive, responsible. People want to work and be involved, want to be active and mutually accountable. So that's the assumption. Now, the thing about human beings, there is that range. Uh, uh, the, uh, the range whereby uh, people who are lazy, dependent, and passive, yes, there are people like that. And there are also people who are energetic, able to be independent. That's, that's uh, on the end of the spectrum. The, 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 the thing that I want you to be thinking about is that what's your assumption? If you assume that people are lazy, you treat them as if they are lazy, then guess what? <laughs> they become lazy. Now, if you assume that people are energetic, they are active at choice, and you treat them accordingly, guess what? So which one do you want to uh, which one do you want to have? So from self-actualization psychology, we look at the brighter side of human nature and we treat people accordingly. So this is what the theory why is all about. Okay. So next one, we look at from uh, the motivation perspective, motivationally. Theory X says that people don't want to work, they hate work, are compliant, prefer to be obedient to authority, they don't want to be responsible, self-centered, and so on. So this is theory X. They hate their work, they hate their boss, they hate the company that they're working. So that's theory X. Now, theory Y goes on the other side of the spectrum, saying that people are response-able in terms of their powers of responses. Uh, they have social interests, able to collaborate. They love challenges and will rise up to a challenge. Open, wants to learn, embraces change, wants to be accountable, have self-directions, wants meta pay to. So that's the theory why. So as leaders, when you set the infrastructure of the organization to cater for this kind of people, and guess what type of people you will have in the organization. Next category are, is the emotional category. Theory X states that people are driven by fear. So that's why you notice certain bosses, they like to use the cane. Right? They like to use the stick to drive people through fear. Copes by secrets, distrust, aggression, copes by competition, one upmanship, wants things to stay the same, status quo. They do not want to change. So that's theory X. And theory Y goes on to say that people are driven by learning, meaning making, meaningfulness, challenge, inspiration, Copes by sharing, cooperating, trusting, connecting, building partnerships, embraces change and disequilibrium. Why disequilibrium? Because they want to be better uh, in the future than they are now. That's disequilibrium. They want to do more, say more, uh, experience more in life. So that's theory. Why? Let's take a look at another uh, category in terms of cognitive. Theory X says that people are close. They don't want to think, don't have the intelligence to solve problems, don't want to think about the future. They need rules and threats to motivate. So that's why you see a lot uh, of organizations, they set up the organization in that way. Uh, don't think, just do what I tell you to do. Have you heard of that? <laughs> Okay, now theory X, sorry, theory Y, people are open. They want to think, understand, study. They use the intelligence, develop creative answers, anticipate trends and look for the future. Wants hopes, dreams, vision, possibilities, growth, innovation. Especially in this world we live today, the VUCA world, volatility, uh, what? Uh, 
Uh, I mentioned VUCA, now I can remember. Uh, unpredictable, and complex, ambiguous. Now, if you have set up your organization with theory why people just, just do what they do, I'm afraid that you are the one who has to pull the whole company all by yourself. However, when you have the right psychologist understanding of people and you set up the organization that allows people to be, uh, to be open using the intelligence, especially in today's uh, very challenging workplace, you can tap into the cre uh, creativity in order to help the organization to grow. Next, morally. Theory X states that people have low sense of conscience and morality, distrustful, paranoid, distrust, unethical, immoral, and prone to lie, cheat, steal, are dishonest, secretive, hiding, distrustful. Oh dear, it sounds like some politicians that I know. Uh, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> Theory why of human being is that they have they have high sense of conscience, ethics, values, trusts in others, and trust is trustworthy, worthy of trust, conscientious, and want to be ethical, driven by good intentions. Um, anger is a positive emotional signal. Why is a positive emotional signal? Because anger is a signal that your value is being violated. So you want to uphold your value. You want to protect your value. It's just that a high functioning human being knows how to use the anger in the right way. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Javi, for, for putting the uh, uh, volatility, uncertain, complex, ambiguous into the chat box. <laughs> Now, these are people who are operating healthily. So if you want the people in your organization to have that high sense of conscience, ethics, uh, and values, then you want to set up the organization in that way. And it starts having that psychology right inside of you. So that's why in uh, meta coaching, we coach at the meta level because when the frames are set right, only then the behaviors come out. So when we have the frames of mind about human beings who are healthy, then the way that we behave towards the people will be healthy in that sense. Now let's take another look from intention. Uh, intention. Theory X states that people want peace, equilibrium, wants power over others, doesn't believe or want to be creative. And theory Y wants disequilibrium. They want change, they want the new, they want power with others, creative, playful, inventive. So when I give this contrast, the theory X and theory Y, you can see the behaviors uh, in people in organizations. And from those behaviors, you can detect and deduce what kind of psychologies those leaders in those organizations are operating from. It is a reflection of the psychologies that are driving the leaders. Next, relationally, Theory X uh, states that people dichotomizes their world and they compete. Theory Y, talks about pe uh, people who create a synergistic world, holistic people who cooperate and collaborate. So this is how people uh, relate with one another. Instead of the win-lose scenario, people are operating from the win-win scenario. So this is, uh, this is these are uh, behaviors driven by uh, theory why of cooperation and collaboration. That's all about uh, creating win-win outcomes for people. So that's basically uh, what we are uh, looking at when we talk about getting the psychologies right uh, in people. So I hope that gives you uh, the ability to 
contrast. When you have psychologists that are driven from the dark side of human nature, that causes the leader to deal with the staff in a certain way. And it will give birth, give rise to people who behave according to those psychologies. So that's why leaders need to have their psychology right. Because uh, our way of thinking about people will influence and create the kind of people in the organization. So it is uh, adding on to what Lily said earlier that we need to lead, uh, lead by example. At the same time, when we have the right psychologies in place, we are giving birth to those kind of people and those kind of behaviors in the organization. And those lead to uh, self-actualizing organization. So let me pause there and invite your comments, your thoughts uh, on this. So go ahead, just unmute yourself and let me hear your thoughts. Yes, Hi, that's it. Um, I'm loving your trainings. Thank you so much for doing this for this community. Thank you. Uh, the perspective that I thought I would share, and maybe you can, you know, provide some some input. You know, when I coach senior executives, the C suites in GLCs and large companies, uh, you are coaching individuals uh, within a, a corporate culture and and framework. Because the um, usually it's HR or corporate comms who would engage me, and uh, time and time again you get the the feedback that the culture and my style are, are clashing. I want to do this. I believe in theory why. Um, but it's top-down dictatorial. The culture doesn't allow theory why. Mm -hmm. So shouldn't you be coaching the stakeholders? <laughs> if only they would come to class, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, eventually and usually I end up building a sense of inner authority with these um, with these executives, because the only person that you can control is yourself. So you want to have that sense of inner authority because who controls how much salt you put on your food? You do. Who controls what you do as a leader in a day? You do. So that's when you can invite theory why into your space while everything else is going on because that's uh you know that's your influence that's what you can bring to the organization because there's no sense in talking about what you cannot control so what is uh, your take on this i absolutely agree with you on that that is the the uh, uh, the power zone get people to uh, take ownership of their powers, and especially when you are operating in an ecosystem yeah. that is created from theory why, you will only hurt and harm yourself if you go against that system. So yes, what you what you do, I totally agree. Get these people to be at peace with themselves, mm. know that they are operating in an environment uh, that is operating on win-lose uh, scenario. So as long as they are at peace with themselves, uh, that's the best that they can do. Yeah, because many of these organizations don't have a, a space for you to be a maverick. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to fit into the culture. Mm -hmm. So that inner authority, that sense of knowing what you, you know, you bring to the table is 
is what we are uh, putting in place actually. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's a very uh, important point uh, that uh, 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 that Tessie raised over there, that you need to know what is the system that you are operating in. Yeah. And everyone have their needs. So if you are operating from your uh, powers responsibly and the system is operating in a different way, for as long as you are at peace with yourself, that's okay. Hmm. Because you try to buck the system, you'll get hurt. Mm. Yeah. You might even get a C4 explosive tied to your <laughs> so ever. <laughs> right. Anyone else? What are your thoughts? I have two questions. Yes. Uh, I'm curious if you use the word assumption and belief interchangeably from what we shared just now the nodding is a yes sorry so what's the question uh because you use the word these are the assumptions of theory x and y mm -hmm. would, would that also be interchangeable with the word belief uh yes anything uh beyond our thought so assumption is beyond our thought our uh, meanings, values, importance, assumptions, those are all beliefs. Okay. It's, so it's all beliefs up, up there. Gotcha. Yeah. It's just that you can think about what you don't believe, but the moment you say, uh-huh, then it becomes a belief. So assumptions are beliefs. <laughs> gotcha. Anything beyond that? Sorry, Leon, um, where was that question coming from? What do you want to apply that to? Because in, in my world, I'm, 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 the two words are resonating, but I'm not sure if they are the same thing. Oh, okay. Thank you for asking. Yeah. The moment the you assume something, uh, you say that people are lazy. So you have affirmed that to be true. So it's a belief. So a belief is a thought that you affirm to be true. Whether they are true or not, it doesn't matter to you because the moment you say, oh yeah, then it becomes <laughs> a belief. Okay, I understand that mm -hmm part already when you're nodding and agreeing, that's a belief. Yeah. And I'm also curious, uh, just now there was the word meta pay. Mm. What is a meta pay? Right, meta pay is the... Uh, I'll use the word, the pleasure, the benefit, the usefulness that you gain from something that is beyond the physical. Gotcha. So meta pay, for example, going to work, the, uh, the meta pay is the relationship that I have with my, uh, with my colleagues, uh, the, uh, the satisfaction uh, of solving a problem. Those are all meta pay. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So uh, shall we move on to the final point for this evening? That is on the contrasting leadership styles. Now, in terms of the contrasting leadership styles, what we are going to look at is the uh, old model versus the new leadership model. So I'm going to uh, list them very quickly and then open up for discussion. Uh, what is it that you notice about the uh, old model? What it is that you notice about the new model and how can you bring it into your, uh, your workplace or wherever that you are operating from. So let's take a look at the uh, old model. The old model of leadership uh, style is derived from the military leadership. Yeah? Because prior to, uh, I would say, prior to the beginning of the uh, 20th century, uh, leadership is mainly driven from, uh, from the military. 
So, uh, for example, even in engineering, uh, I, I'm uh, uh, qualified as a civil engineer. You know where does that word civil come from? Because before civil engineering, there were only military engineers. Yeah. When people who are not in the military begin to practice engineering, that's where the word civil engineering comes from. So prior to the, the leadership that we are looking into corporations uh, today and from corporations, we are bringing it into our household. The old style is the military leadership style. So look at the military leadership style and to be able to contrast it with the new leadership model. The military leadership style, notice it is authoritarian, traditional, and the metaphors that we use in even in the workplace are also the metaphors of military to fight, to win, to force into submission, to uh, destroy, to demolish our competitors. Notice, uh, those are the same metaphors that the military uses. So leaders set the vision. How, how many of you have been involved in in uh, say the C-suite, they go away for the uh, uh, for this weekend where they have the vision mission uh, 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 weekend, and usually it is in in some well equipped resort, and they come down from the mountain on Monday and say, "Here is the company's vision and mission." <laughs> so the leader set the vision. Why? Because people uh, people are stupid. So don't let them set it. We are the ones who set it. So this comes from the uh, military style. People uh, uh, are, are, are supposed to buy into this vision. Uh, leaders are the ones who create policies, structures, uh, micromanage. And this translated into when we have the work from home. Uh, corporations uh, getting... The, the employees who work from home to use certain software because this software will track uh, how long they are in uh, on the <laughs> in front of the screen, whether they are using the, uh, the keyboard, uh, are they really in front of the screen? So these are micromanaging. It is top-down bu uh, bureaucratic, slow to adopt, to change. Leaders are the one who instruct, and it is fear-based. Fear-based in the sense that you don't perform according to the KPIs. Uh, then uh, up you go. You're fired, that kind of thing, right? And it is power and status uh, focused. So that's the old military leadership style. And to be asking yourself, now when you work as a worker in that environment where you have a leader who uses the military style. How happy will you be? <laughs> Contrast that with the self-actualizing leadership. In self-actualizing leadership, the coaching facilitative way of leading is what self-actualizing leaders use. We have the systems metaphor, the network. Net, people are networking with one another. There is that dance, mutual influence, continuous process. Leaders listen first instead of shouting their, uh, their command. They listen to what the people uh, are uh, telling them. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, I think Bill Gates was the one who uh, wrote the book Business at the Speed of Light. So he was mentioning about uh, corporations today, they rely on how quickly the bad news travel from the person who's facing the customer, how fast that bad news travels from uh, the front office staff to the CEO because the CEO is the one who makes the decision. If he doesn't know the bad news happening, then he'll make the wrong decision. And, the, and in the old military style, 
he has to go through all of those levels. And by the time he reaches the CEO, uh, it is already too late, right? So we are talking about uh, shared vision arises in dialogue. So it requires uh, participative process, uh, uh, participative dialogue uh, in the organization. People are thinking together. Uh, you have coordinated action. Uh, we have uh, examples of uh, uh, empowered teams. Uh, people are put into teams. These are teams of uh, specialists and they make their own decisions about which direction that they need to go because they are the specialists uh, in those areas. So they need not wait uh, for, the, uh, for the command from the top. Even in the military today, so we talk about military leadership of bygone age, even in the military today, they need to move the command center from the highest command to the operative on the ground. Otherwise, it will be too late. By the time they receive the approval from the top, the enemy is gone <laughs> already. So this is this is where in uh, the self-actualizing leadership, the 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 need to empower the person who are facing the issues to give them the power to make decisions to change, right? So we are talking about community action, systemic thinking, uh, flexi uh, uh, flexibility, quick to adapt. Uh, and instead of uh, leaders telling the followers what to do, leaders are there to coach. So when we talk about coaching, it's about allowing the strengths, the uh, potentials, the talents from people to come uh, to come out. Leaders who coach are leaders who achieve the organizational objectives and the people grow at the same time. So these are the leaders who coach. So the leaders here are vision casters and meaning instigators. They instigate meaning, empowering meaning. So they set the objectives of the organization through dialogue, through uh, collaboration and cooperation, and allowing people to use the powers within them to achieve those objectives. So that's the contrast that we look at. And you put yourself as a worker in the company. So which kind of company would you like to work for? And that is, the, to me, a big reason why people are leaving organizations in droves today. Because when organizations are still using the military style of leadership, people are saying, no more. I'm done with this. I don't want this anymore. And I was talking to uh, some people in organizations in HR who was mentioning that uh, in her organization, the turnover staff rate is at 30%. And I go, what? To me, 30% is huge. <laughs> you have to replace your staff at that level. So uh, if the... If the turnover rate is at that level, it is not about your uh, recruitment uh, strategy. It is about the leadership skill because 80% of people quit the companies because of their bosses. Yeah. So this, to me, what, it, what makes it uh, so... Uh, uh, I would even go to the extent of saying it becomes so personal to me because especially entrepreneurs, uh, founders of organizations, when they don't have the skills of leading people according to the way that people operate, then they are struggling in bringing up the value that the Company, their company is supposed to bring. They, uh, and uh, you, you look at all the new companies coming out today. They are so creative in all the products and services that they're bringing to the organization. And yet, many of them, they are like a flash in the pan. 
because they go they grow up so huge and because the leaders do not have the skills of the 21st century leader this these uh, uh, leaders who are uh, engaged with the staff and because of that they have a very high turnover and they cannot sustain uh, in this economy yeah so uh, i'd like to invite uh, uh, each and every one of you any one of you who have any comments with respect to the uh, contrasting leadership style the old style uh, of leadership, the military style, and also the uh, new leadership model that, that is what we call the self-actualization uh, model. So go ahead, anyone? So uh, Mazuki, on my side, uh, I can tell you right now, I've grown up in a military household and I've um, pretty much been through a school with the military old view and worked at a co few companies mm. with the military view. Um, and it's scary because everything you say is what I could relate to. It's like, yeah, I was there. It's like people just left and it wasn't because of the job. The job was paying them over enough. They, just, they left because of the boss. Yeah. They couldn't communicate. They couldn't do, they didn't feel like they could express themselves. There was caught like at my, when I used to wait to, for example, a very successful uh, restaurant. I mean, one of the most successful in my town. So mm. as a waiter, you would make, triple at a, as at a coffee shop for example this was that good but the 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 mental the the emotional side of the job was was so bad because of the leadership mm. um, you don't 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 do just do this don't do anything else just do this just follow this uh begin for example begin with the, if some if one thing goes bad everything is bad everyone is bad and end of the night, it's like, how are you? You did well. It's like this. You don't know where you're standing with the person that's going up. And um, people would go in and out. Per week, we had a waiter leaving. Per week. Uh, wow. And it was it was like that. And as again, it's, I'm listening to these whys. And I'm like, even for myself, um, mm -hmm. I'm starting on my own coaching business. I'm going into working with, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Um, uh, high high uh, achieving performing clients and I listen to these things I'm like Yordi I wonder how this applies to self as well yeah. like if are you on the on the Y or are you treating yourself on the X mm. and then at the same time I'm like okay if I keep going with this I would like to yeah I would like to and choose to build from the Y like my own brand and or something from the Y where I believe the person is willing to think and be and grow and uh, they want to be uh, responsible, yes. uh, independent. Yes. So yeah, so it's a lot of, lot of breakthroughs <laughs> on my side. <laughs> thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Christian. Yes. That. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, so for me, um, as you we were going through, it reminded me to say, what are the beliefs? that I would like as a, as a manager, that I would like to adopt, mm -hmm. that will support me uh, as I'm, you know, leading uh, people. Uh, you know, one of the beliefs is, you know, people are generally good when you come from that angle. Yes. Yeah, people are generally good. Is it the environment as a leader that I'm creating for people to behave this way? Is it because I'm not listening to people? That's why people are behaving this way. Mm -hmm. You know, is it because I'm, telling them <laughs> that's why maybe they're behaving this way they want to co-create so everyone can come from a belief that says people are generally good if they behave in a way that you don't really like ask yourself questions or engage with them thank you appreciate that when you when you mentioned that uh, i recall and uh, 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 an opportunity that i had i was working with this um, uh, with this organization, they were uh, they were engaged by a, a government in uh, Africa, uh, and one of the things that they asked us to work on was how to get the people uh, to uh, because they had this uh, performance management system in place since 1999. And then they had a seven, uh, 16 year plan. So in 2016, they did a post mortem and said uh, it failed. We did not achieve our KPI. 
And for a government to admit that, I really salute that particular country because uh, in my country, that will not happen. <laughs> but this country, they said that we didn't achieve our uh, KPI. So we, we want to rectify that. And, and when they got together uh, and uh, we, the organization that I was working with, uh, worked with close to 200 senior government servants uh, uh, from every ministry in order to find the, uh, the solution to it. And one of the things that they, that they discovered that was happening on the ground, it came to the point where the people who are, the, the workers were not even willing to sign their uh, KPI papers. They, they are not willing to accept that these are my KPI for this year. And the reason for that was because of the breakdown in communication between uh, them and the immediate supervisor and so on up there. And I, again, I have full respect for this particular uh, country. And they said, we need to rectify that. We need to change the way that we communicate uh, uh, with our people. And one, and the, the primary initiative that they brought into the country was to implement a coaching culture in the organization. Yeah, and as I say that my, uh, I have goosebumps. And this comes from a government, organ, uh, a, a whole, the, the whole government. We work with the uh, Directorate of uh, Public Services. Cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> Christian and uh, and Pierre, you may uh, hazard a guess because they are your neighbor. <laughs> okay. Yes. Hi. I am. Um, my apology for a harsh voice. I'm. I'm a bit fluish. <laughs> I'm also from South Africa, and I'm sitting here as a senior employee in government. Yes. And. I'm having goosebumps just to think about all the mistakes I'm making myself, mm -hmm. um, reflecting on, on what you've just presented. And um, I think your, if there's a government that can, can realize that we need to um, have a coaching mentality, how that will change a country. Um, and sadly, I'm working in, in, in which I always, and some of the other departments don't always like it, but I, I'm saying I'm working in the most important one, the health one. Mm. Um, so I'm sitting and I'm, I'm just reflecting and thinking that you just now mentioned about KPAs and things where people are just, they're just doing it for the sake of ticking a box. Um, I'm, I'm not interested in even what my KPIs are. I'm not interested in being um, evaluated, my performance being evaluated. It's only a thing of I'm ticking a box for the sake of compliance because somewhere somebody is looking for the papers. So we've got a massive job to do. And I'm sp speaking specifically now for us in South Africa where I am. We've got a massive job to do to change that culture around. Um, and I'm so thankful for the opportunity of, of learning all these things because these are things that I can take back and that I can implement because like Christian also said, he can relate to it. I can also relate to it. Um, I, I even find myself guilty in many instances. I was laughing when you, you said, all the people go to the bush and then they decide about the vision and then they come down from the bush and they tell everybody about the vision. <laughs> so yeah, we have those in Darbas and um, we need to learn to change that. We need to learn to have new mentality and implement a new way because sadly it is killing our people with just as a cleaner, you're coming to work to save a life and that is the important thing to note. Um, that you come to work to save a life, although you are just responsible to file a paper or just responsible to clean the floor. But if you don't do that properly, somebody's life is going to be at stake. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for saying that because uh, it gives me hope. 
<laughs> it gives me a hope. Uh, and the thing about change uh, is that we don't need to change everything. We just change what's within our control. So yes. that's why in meta coaching, we say we change one conversation at a time. So through, our, through you, you are bringing the change to one person at a time. Whether it will affect the whole organization, in, in, in your example, the government or not, I will use the word, that's none of your business. You don't need to worry about that. As long yes. as you bring the change through your voice, through your action, to the person that connects to you, your job is done. So that's why I say, uh, I'm inspired. I feel hopeful we have people like you. And whenever that I think about the characters that we have in the Malaysian government, I go back to that particular country, I say, there is hope. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You know, Marzuki, in this pandemic of uh, almost now two and a half years, I've been engaged by some theory exes <laughs> to um, let go of staff uh, and not in the, um, you know, we say in the forthright way, in the uh, transparent way, Mm. where you actually tell them, uh, you know, the company is, isn't able to afford you and so on. So, you know, there was this, this one company who engaged me uh, to take them through a coaching program so that they could have a coaching report, which, we, which would be filed as a, uh, as a case in industrial court that this person had this and this and this um, um, weaknesses. Mm. You know? So when, when we're talking about theory access, these companies uh, stoop to all kinds of levels to you know, put their, or to um, have their power over staff. And then, you know, when you get into the, the way they think, it's quite shocking. Mm -hmm. And I've also been involved with um, harassment cases and bullying cases because jobs are so hard to come by. And they, you know, especially for women who need to support family, that, that, that income is so important to them that they feel that they had no choice but to tolerate the exploitation mm -hmm. uh, of those theory X companies mm -hmm. because they were just doing this power over thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there's so many ways of talking about this subject. It's, it's real. It's real about the bullying, the harassment, the power overing, you know, that, I wish this theory why could be more out there and more um, what so, so that everybody more people would know about this that you mean you mean we can do that <laughs> as simple as you mean you, you, you can there's an option yeah. you know because they're stuck in that rut for so long yes yeah. Yeah. thank you uh, for that so when you say that you wish that this theory why can be brought into uh, more corporations, I'll say uh, amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> That's we are, what we are working towards. And I noticed that Harvey uh, put in, uh, uh, how do you integrate mentoring in self-actualizing leadership? Harvey, you want to uh, verbalize that? Yes, I, I do. Uh, formation mentoring in uh, School of Medicine and uh, Public Health, and I also do coaching. So it's 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 a certain balancing act of when do you coach and when do you mentor. Mm. And oftentimes, when you have people who are your juniors, they look up to uh, senior people as their mentors. So 
so in self actualizing I, I noticed that uh, the the emphasis is more of the coaching. Mm. Um, I just want to see where do you play the uh, area of mentoring in the self actualizing leadership. So. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Javi, for that. Uh, now, the first thing that I just want to say that coaching is the primary tool of self-actualizing leaders. Yeah, It's the primary tool because as uh, self-actualizing leaders, we want our people to grow. And operating from the win-win scenario, we want our people to become better than us. That's what coaches do. And that's also what drives a self-actualizing leaders to get the people to be the best that they can be. Because when they are the best that they can be, then they, be, they become uh, greater of greater value to the organization. And that's a win-win uh, situation because when the organization benefits, so we as workers in the organization also benefit. So uh, uh, the self-actualizing uh, leaders the primary tool is the tool of coaching. Now, mentoring is when I realize that, okay, this person I'm uh, coaching does not have this skill uh, and I happen to have uh, more experience in this area. So I'll step into mentor. Uh, it's just that when you have the skill of coaching, mentoring becomes so much easier because our communication model is the facilitation model instead of the command and control model. I was working uh, with, uh, I, I did not work for the company, but this company engaged me. Uh, when they start to, started to engage me, they had this problem because they were experts in the area of, uh, of uh, palm oil uh, industry uh, and they wanted to transfer the skills to the new people coming in so that their, uh, their uh, senior managers can retire and new people come in. And, this, and they created a mentoring program. And they launched the mentoring program every year. And ev every year that they launch, just a few months down the road, it just collapsed. The reason being is the so-called mentors we're using the command and control style on the mentee. <laughs> so these people say, I don't want to go and be mentored by my boss. I'm scared he's going to kill me. And it collapsed. So all that I did was went in, hey, why don't we just introduce some uh, coaching skills uh, to your managers and let them learn the skill of uh, facilitating ideas. And many of these managers who were mentors, after learning those skills, came to me and said, I didn't know that we could communicate with people in this way. I thought that we have to hit them on the head every time. And it's tiring. Yeah, they, 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 were, they were honest enough to say that it's tiring. I mean, when you hit people on the head, your hand also hurts. Why? And that was what happened to them. And when they learned this skill, they said, oh, wow, we didn't know this. It's so much easier now. So, yeah, uh, how do we integrate it? It's fully integrated. That's the way of communicating. The facilitation model. Does that make sense? Yeah. Harvey? Yeah. That's right. So we are uh, already uh, at 9.30 uh, and uh, uh, my time is already 9.30. This is when we are supposed to end. And uh, before we end, uh, I would like to say thank you to all of you for being here. And uh, actually one of the highlights that I have when I have this session is to hear from you, what is your takeaway uh, from this session? So if we can in the next uh, few minutes to quickly, go through uh, from uh, 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 every one of you. What is your takeaway from this particular uh, session? So if you don't mind, uh, let me start off with the bottom of my screen. Uh, uh, check you, is that cool? Yeah. 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 Yeah
Ah, uh, check you. Yeah, we have check you and co. So I'll go for check you first. Check you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. What's your takeaway? Okay. Hello. Yes. Okay. So, uh, to me, I mean, leadership is like there is no one size fit all kind of thing. It have to be situational. Sometimes we have to be like the ministry style. Just listen to me. Just be cooperative. Don't be creative. But sometimes we have to let them, I mean, uh, on their free hand kind of thing to do things. It have to be, uh, to me, I always believe that it have to be situ situational and depends on the situation. Uh. So that is why. But of course, we need to know all those kind of uh, management theory in order for us to use it at the right uh, situation. Yeah. That's my takeaway. Uh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Check you. Uh, uh, Kwan, go ahead. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, Mr. Mazuki. Hi. Uh yeah. Um, my takeaway tonight actually is uh, I think I think that's good to learn regarding the uh, X and Y, whereas actually uh, of course I uh, agree with the opinion just now that we have to handle the I mean not say handle I mean treating our our our, our team members with in a kind of different way. I would say that of course why the method will be much more uh, positively mm -hmm. will, will, will bring much more energy than uh, than uh, the Y one, the X one. So I think that uh, I've jot down some of the uh, the, the, the uh, how to theory, the theory, the theory Y. So mm -hmm. we're looking forward to try to imply that, I mean, to try to think and uh, do in that way Mm. So that can have a stronger team and uh, we'll look forward to that. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Mazuki, for, for tonight's session. Thank you, uh, Kwan. Uh, next, uh, Chang Mei Lan. Are you able to access your mic? Chang Mei Lan. No? I'll move on to Ko. We have another Ko here. Go ahead. No? Right, thank you. Uh, Hashim? Yeah, Mazuki, thank you very much for the enlightening uh, evening. Uh, from what you were um, mentioning, we still have hope, I think. We have hope, yeah, because um, it resonates with me when you mentioned about your case with that uh, country out there. Uh, last week, I was, I was having a conversation with one of the sub Saharan uh, country, and they are taking action based on the, they said, yes, we do have problems. And we admit that we have problems, and we want to settle that issues. So we hope over here, they will, so, they will say the same thing. Then it will settle the issue. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And uh, uh, next, uh, Mochidisi, you, your your screen has moved down, so I better uh, go to you in, in case I forget. So go ahead, Mochidisi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I'm taking away as a leader is to say to lead in a self-actualizing way, I have to first get my psychology right. Wow. Mm. It starts with me. It will not be easy, but uh, you know, you need to say, let me do it because I want to influence people and I can only influence people when I have the right psychology. Yeah. Thank you. There's a big one. Uh, there's a big one. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Lisa. Go ahead, Lisa. Thank you. To me, it would be, I am the change with the right psychology. Thank you. Appreciate that. Pierre, go ahead. Uh, mine was, if you focus on X, you're going to get X. If you focus on Y, you're going to get Y. Right. Thank you for that, Pierre. Uh, next, Aloni, go ahead. Hello, Nitan. Hi. Um, 
why uh, uh, my takeaway today is since that we want to bring our team, our team together to have hope. So we have to be the one, the first one to always stand at the bright side, mm. um, to have a hope and believe that they, they are also they are also wanted to be the right the the bright side person. Mm -hmm. So to self actualize ourselves and self actualize our team member together. Yes. Wow. Thank you for that. Uh, and uh, uh, Christian, go ahead. Mazuki, my takeaway is it, it comes down to that please opposition. It's better to have a choice than a lack of a choice. Yeah. Um, so you always have a choice. Um, because I really like I, I also unconsciously unaware I had that like this is the only way and now you've shown me you've brought awareness to the other side so it's like there's always the other way okay thank you Christian appreciate that Wendy go ahead Wendy hi Mazuki hi my aunt I think what I like about it is um uh, as you are also a graduate of Money and You, and I've been doing Money and You for the last 22 years. A lot of these are win-win principles. And one of the things is for things to change, I must first change. Yeah. So this is what I've been doing. And uh, in fact, during COVID, my organization uh, is still doing very well, and we are still employing a lot of people because we... Just this year alone, I got so many new contracts. That's why I just put it out. If people are looking for work, please call on me. Yeah. Uh, I love your teaching. And I love how things are going uh, with you. And I love your energy. That's why I feel like saying thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Appreciate that very much. Uh, Harvey, you've moved, your screen has moved down, so I better get to you quickly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Marzuki, I, I really appreciate you mentioning about the great uh, resignation. And I really appreciate the awareness of what's happening in the Western world and causing the great regret. And hearing from you uh, about the shift from X to Y and to use self-actualization leadership through coaching and facilitation, I, I, would, I would now think that that could be a good uh, the great rethink, mm. rethink. When you, when you reframe mindsets, you rethink how people would uh, lead other people. So maybe that's a good way to rally people to rethink their leadership. Wow. So that's my takeaway. Thank you for Thank that. You. Thank you, Harvey. Uh, next, uh, Lily, go ahead, Lily. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you, Mazuki. Uh, really love to attend your class because I always get some tips and mm -hmm. ideas on how to improve myself and also improve in my uh, training as well. My key takeaway is leadership style is like brief, brief, uh, drive by the assumption on what people need because always that when I learn a lot of leadership style, sometimes it's like which style is actually a good style, you know. So we are always, for me, like always uh, very confused about the styles and then whether this is good or bad and all this. But I think for me tonight that I learned is like, let's look at what people need and then how you actually, I mean, your self-actualization and apply to the most appropriate style. Mm, wow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, Leon, go ahead. Absolutely love tonight's session. So thank you so much, Mazuki. <laughs> and it, it resonates a lot because my work with leadership is heart-centered leadership and it resonates so much. And we need great leaders at this point of time. And like two, a few things come up for me tonight. It's like one is when I see the world differently, the world becomes different. Mm. It changes based on who I am in the moment. And oh. to embody that and create that change, hold that space for that change is so, so important. If not, then we live by default. Yeah. 
And the second one is a funnier one. Uh, it's a bit harsher uh, because one of my business mentors shared with me the, the flip chart called Evolve or Die. Oh, okay. And it's time for, for organizations. They are changing already, but not all are changing at this moment where we need to create spaces where humans thrive mm. rather than putting them as a wheel in the cog in the machine and make them run and run them into oblivion. <laughs> so... It's, it's important for that change to happen now. So thank you so much for being one of the light bringers to this topic and <laughs> starting that change here locally and internationally as well. Yes. Thank you, Leon. Appreciate that very much. And uh, Tessie, go ahead. Picking up, picking up from what Leon said about the space, um, what I take away, what I appreciate most about today is your your um, facilitating this session allows so much space for us participants to um, come back or to, um, to give our feedback uh, from so many perspectives so that there's so much, I feel there's so much space. There's not one, uh, one leader driving the conversation to, you know, to skew it to one particular uh, topic or one area, I feel that there's so much uh, flexibility, mm. so much versatility in, in your creating this space for us to share and to learn about this topic. So that's what I took away. Wow. Thank you very much uh, for, for that, uh, Tessie. Yeah. I appreciate all of you for being here. Probably the uh, 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 final thing that I would just like to mention uh, is that uh, we talk about theory X and theory Y, and I use the word, the assumptions in theory X and the assumptions in theory Y. Uh, Leon, pick the word assumptions. Now, uh, I, I, I seldom go overly enthusiastic about TV shows, but there is this documentary on uh, Netflix that is called Babies. It is about how babies grow and develop. And when you understand how babies, babies are born psychologically healthy, it's their parents make them crazy. So babies are born psychologically healthy. And when that documentary presented how babies grow, how babies learn, they tick all the boxes in theory why all the boxes in theory why babies tick them. So that's theory why, that's who we were when we were born into this world. It's just that as we grow up, we come across lots of things that confuse us that cause us to gravitate towards theory X. So this enlightened leadership is about bringing us back to where we were before that empowered human being. So with that, I would like to say everyone, thank you very much uh, uh, for being here. I really appreciate uh, uh, your being here. Uh, I know that uh, for, for some of you, you are coming in in the afternoon, uh, some of you in the evening. So I, I appreciate your in, investing your time, investing your energy to be here. And I so look forward to seeing all of you uh, again in the next session. So with that, I'll say good night, good afternoon, and goodbye. May we meet again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.